VTR 6606 Thriller A Place to Die Part 1 Take 1 Bruce, it's wonderful. It's our first house, your first practice. Well, it's a bit dusty. I don't care. It says things to me. The house, the village, everything. You were so clever finding it. I just know you're going to be a success here. Hey, steady on. 
Well, you know I'm here, so I get Dr. Sharp's nameplate down and mine up. Nonsense. If an English village is anything like a small American town, they already know your <laughs> shoe size by now. What's in there? Ah, well, um... This is the surgery. And this is the waiting room. I can't wait to see you sitting there with your stethoscope on looking like Richard Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find the sitting room. This way. Follow me. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> It's a bit tatty. There's a bigger one upstairs. Oh, you're as excited as I am. I can tell by your mouth. <laughs> Admit it. Oh, it's a nice feeling, yes. I'm a town boy who's always wanted to be a country doctor. And this is about as far away from the rat race as you can get. Mm. Oh, to be on my own, Tessa. To feel completely responsible at last after all those hospitals. Mm. I wish I'd known you then. I bet you looked so sexy mm. as an overworked, hollow-eyed <laughs> intern. <laughs> Foot. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. There we are. All right? Doctor? Hmm? Would you look at my leg? Oh, with pleasure. No, the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Nelson. Not professional etiquette. Hmm? Doctor not allowed to treat his own family. Hmm. Are you happy? Well, I wish it wasn't. Dead man's shoes <laughs> and dead man's furniture. Yes, I'm happy. You? Mm. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, sweet Connecticut fashion writer over here on a visit, minding her own business, and suddenly she's snatched away by a penniless doctor and buried in the heart of the English countryside. I love the English countryside, and don't worry about this house. I have plans. Mm. Take this room, for instance. I see Adam Green watered silk on the walls. Mm. My Lord's just My dears! Oh, I'm so sorry. Whatever will you think of me, I, I don't know what to say. I'm Dr. Nelson, and this is my wife, Tessa. Oh, I know that, love you. Who else would you be? <laughs> I'm Bess Tarling, ma'am. I was old Dr. Sharp's housekeeper. You don't have to keep me on, but your husband did say in his letter... No, we'd be delighted to keep you on. In fact, I don't know what we do without you. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you, I'm sure. I'm sorry the house is in. Uh, my wife broke a bone in her foot on honeymoon. Of uh, skiing. That's why we're here a week early. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if we've inconvenienced you. I'm the one that's shamed that you should come and find us like this, you and your moon pale, moon gold lady. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever sort of housekeeper will you think I am? <laughs> now you just sit yourselves down and I'll go and make a nice cup of tea. Oh, Bess, I was just going down to the store. And... Oh, sorry. There you are. Caught me out again, you have. This is my niece, Jill, from London. Hello. 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 You won't expect it, so Jill's been sleeping in the spare bedroom. But she's going tomorrow. But I could go straight away. I've only got a suitcase. No, no, no. We wouldn't dream of it, would we, darling? No, no. You can stay as long as you like. It wouldn't be any longer than tomorrow. Tomorrow being full moon and all, and the day after being Lady Day. You're very kind. Well, we'd better be running along. Uh, you'll be wanting to look over the rest of the house, and I'll get you that nice cup of tea. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. See you later. Not while I'm around, she won't. <laughs> Let's go and look at the bedroom. <laughs> Dr. Nelson. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 
<laughs> like tower. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jill. Goodbye. Oh. So I never known a builder break hammers as fast as you do. It's not me as breaks them, it's you who sells me rotten ones. <laughs> hey, lobbed you that bit of slander. Hey, you'll get nothing out of him. He's still dreaming about that poacher got away. You shouldn't go after poachers with a gun, Lob. It's not right. Charge a bird shot in the rump works wonders. <laughs> Size. We want no wanderers in the woods on Lady Day. Ah, well, I'm going to let you down with oh. this one, my dear, but I, no, I've got something else to do. Oh, dear. Oh, Bess. Oh, she pushed it. Oh, Bess. Uh, She's come among us. Uh, she... <sighs> She's here. What? I've seen her. At last. Oh, um, let me see, uh, socks, socks. Top right-hand drawer, darling, I told you. Why do women always have to say I told you? Oh, thank heavens, that's the lot. I hate unpacking. That's uh, odd. Hmm? jammed at the back of this drawer. They could have been there forever without anyone finding them. Aha! Uh -huh. Love letters. Maybe Dr. Sharp wasn't such a dry old bachelor as I've been told he was. No, no. That's just it. Look at the address on the back. They're not to him. They're from him. Stamped and sealed? But they've never been mailed. Hmm. Why would someone write letters and not mail them? I don't know. Well, he was a bit eccentric from what I've heard. Perhaps he just forgot. Yeah, it could be, I suppose. It just seems odd. Well, better keep them safe. We'll send them to his executors. Well, I must go down and look at the factory. Open for business next week. Can't have the patients coming into dirty surgery. If they come at all, that is. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, good morning. It's nice to have a doctor again. The village ain't been the same without one. It 
seems I have my first patience, darling. <laughs> this is my wife, Tessa. We know that. We've been telling your husband, my dear, how nice it is to have a doctor again. And especially one with a wife like you. Uh, too true, <laughs> true enough, isn't it? <laughs> Well, that's very sweet of you. I know we're going to be very happy here. I was just running down to the store to get some things. You sure you'll be all right? Perfectly. I'm sure with anyone else, you'd prescribe the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice meeting you all. Tell you, moon pale and moon gold she is, with a left foot limping. Oh, I know you're the schoolmistress, Nan, and a learned lady, none more so. But I know what I've seen. Sounds very light to me. Bess knows. I don't disbelieve you, Bess. But we've waited so long, and with such needing, the heart sometimes sees what it wants to see. You mad, Nick? Moon pale and moon gold she is, with a left foot limping. As it was promised, so it has come to pass. It's all there, Nick. The marks. <laughs> the day. It is Lady Day. The time. And the moon. <laughs> the sign she was to show us. Art, I don't like this. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Nelson, my dear, you shouldn't have bothered. I'd have fetched anything you wanted. This is Mrs. Nelson, the doctor's wife I was telling you about. We know that. Hello. This is Job, the blacksmith. Mrs. Nelson. Hello. Seth. He does all our gardens round here. Oh. Nelson. Hello. Lob, the gamekeeper. Mr. Nelson. How do you do? Dan, the builder. Mrs. Nelson. Hello. Belle, the dressmaker. If you should ever want anything run up. Mrs. Nelson. Hello. Nan, schoolmistress. How do you do? And Bart. And Jane. Hello. And this is Nick. Nick. Nelson, right. and none of your fancy prices, Molly. Oh, now then, Bess. Oh, well done. <laughs> You've got your little here, I need there so many are. things. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. How about the foot? Should I have a look at that while you're here? Oh, thank you, I'm used to it. There's nothing wrong with it, really. There's nothing wrong with your throat, either. Oh, that's right. I didn't know that. Nothing wrong with any of us. We just come to see the new doctor. And his wife. Right. Anything else? No, I think that's everything. Thank you. It's a pleasure to serve you, Mrs. Nelson. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet. Oh. 
Oh, yes. Thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Bye. Mr. Nelson. He's the expected one. Oh, if you put them on the table, that will be fine. It really was very sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if this isn't the sweetest place, they couldn't have been nicer to me at the store. I got introduced to everyone. I got all the local gossip. Well, I've had the treatment here, too. There was nothing wrong with any of them. They just came to look me over. <laughs> oh, Bruce. Bruce, I'm so glad we came here. It was meant, I tell you. She didn't arrive last year. Not all the years before, but this time. <laughs> this time, eh, Nick? <laughs> Full moon and Lady Day together. That's why she's come. Bye bye. <laughs> Bless my dear. You did well to bring your niece. She'll be just right for her. Thank you, Bart. Come on, sir. It's funny how they all limped. All three of them. And yet not one of them would let me have a look at their foot. You know the one they call Mad Nick? He limps as well. Well, it's inbreeding, I suppose. In closed communities, it happens. They all inherit the same deficiency, and it becomes a kind of mark of shame. They're beautiful people. Yes, of course. That's why they're so sensitive about it. <laughs> well, don't let it worry you. Mm Good night, Mrs. Nelson. Good night, Dr. Nelson.
love you, my dear. You shouldn't be doing that. Proper early bird you are, and no mistake. Now, you just come and sit yourself down, and I'll get breakfast. Look what I found on the doorstep. Crocuses. Mm. And fennel. Mm. Witch's foot. Rosemary. Rue. Rue. Left you by the little people, no doubt. <laughs> Mrs. Darling. <laughs> You're a very special personage in this village, as well you must know. I can't tell you what it means to us. We're that grateful. I dare say the little people would like you to wear the flowers in your hair. A oh, fine sight I'd look first thing in the morning. Oh, my lady. I hope we haven't offended you. No, of course not. would look pretty in the bird bath in the garden. Oh, I shouldn't bother to take it outside now that you've brought it in. You know how it is. Oh, morning. Good morning. Morning, Jill. <laughs> Breakfast will be five minutes. Oh, just coffee for me, thanks. Oh, oh I would be glad to get back to town tomorrow. That music kept me awake again. Music? You hear it? it? Sounds as though it's way off down in the woods somewhere. Like pipes or a, or a flute or something. <laughs> Music in the woods? <laughs> I don't know, perhaps there's a midnight orchestra in the village. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. What do you suppose this is? Garlic. <laughs> what? <laughs> Garlic? <laughs> You know, the stuff doctors aren't supposed to eat before kissing their wives or treating their patients. <laughs> yes, but what's it doing in here? I don't know. Perhaps Dr. Sharp was a secret cook? Mm. There, now look. Don't let me ever hear you say you have nothing to write with. Bruce? Mm -hmm. Look. What's this? Mm. Like an old surgical instruments case. Hey, this could be a bit of luck. Still a few I haven't got. Uh. Oh, no. Don't say I'm supposed to double as vicar as well. <laughs> he seems to have been an odd sort of man. Mm. Well, my patients will be thinking I'm an odd sort of man if I don't get the surgery open. Good morning. and hours to you and yours, a bit of each of us. Well, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Here, let me take it off. I'll do it. something they might like? Oh, no, my dear. It's not our place to be looking to you for thanks. Yes, but 
Well, where I come from, it's customary to exchange tokens with new neighbors, and you've given me so much. That oh, I thought... no. <laughs> well, thank you. You got to promise now me you nothing. you keep out of it. You've got nothing to do with it. You've never had anything to do with it. Look at you. Hello, Jill, my dear. You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> oh. Well, you're sound as a bell elsewhere. So the pain isn't referred from another location. What said, Doctor? Oh, nothing. I'm sorry. Now, let's try the shoulder again. Now, just push against me. There again. Oh, sorry. Right. Um, put your shirt back on again. You're a gamekeeper. That's right, Doctor. Do any shooting? Fair bit. From which shoulder? The right. Hmm. I see. Occupational hazard, I'm afraid. Give any joint that sort of pounding, you're bound to get a bit of arthritis. Otherwise, you're disgustingly fit, like all the others in this village. Now, what did Dr. Sharp give you for it? I didn't tell him. Why not? I wasn't minded to. Didn't you trust him? Trust him? I just didn't like him. Why? Nobody did much. He was too nosy behalf. Always in everybody's business. <laughs> well, it's very difficult for a doctor not to be, you know. There are ways and ways. And what was wrong with his ways? He was just too nosy, we are. Yes, well, um, get these made up. Take them with food. If you find that upset your stomach, stop them at once and let me know. Otherwise, come back and see me in a fortnight. Thank you. But I'll be all right long before that. Thank you, Doctor. My best respects to you. And to your lady. Have you never been able to talk? But you do understand. Why is everyone so nice to me? <laughs> oh, thank you. What sort of man was Dr. Sharp? Was he on his own when he fell down those stairs? Nick? Why did Dr. Sharp keep garlic in his surgery? Nick? 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 
Why did Dr. Sharp keep a crucifix? <laughs> later, Tessa, later. <laughs> That'll be old Grandad Benjamin's. He makes them for the kids. Yes, but what was he doing in my stove? Later, darling. We'll talk about it later, all right? <laughs> so anyway, like you said, I went up the ladder, got halfway up, Tired, darling? Mm. It's a different sort of tiredness though from the hospital. I somehow feel these people are mine. It makes a difference. You suddenly realize all that science you were taught. It's all good common sense, really. Bruce. Bruce. What what did Dr. Sharp actually die of? Well, and he fell down the stairs, he broke his neck. Oh, come on, darling, don't say you're still worrying about that doll. I told you, common sense. It was probably left lying around by some village child. Sharp got irritated and threw it in the stove. Come on, darling. Settle down. I've got another busy day tomorrow. All right? Good night, darling. Good night. Is it, Aunt Bess? It's in honour of Lady Day. It's a great compliment that you've been invited.
help soon yours, Oliver. Doctor and his wife been invited. Shh! He's dog tired. He's got to get his rest. Oh, come on, Jill. Dear John, I can't understand why you don't answer. My position is desperate. I can't talk over the phone. Please write or come soon. Yours, Oliver. Bruce. Bruce, uh, wake up. Bruce, please wake up. Tess, what's the matter? Bruce, look at these. What are they? These are Dr. Sharp's letters. What are you doing with them? Tess, you might no right to open them. Bruce, the man was desperate. He was worried out of his mind. It's none of your business. He's dead. Yes, but I want to know what he was worried about. Know, his, his health, his investment, some imaginary disaster. How should I know? It's morbid to read a dead man's letters. It's also illegal. Tessa, darling, please, get into bed and go to sleep. All right? Oh, Belle, leave it alone, too. I never knew such a floor of fuzzball. Now, stand still. It's got to be just so. Uh, you know, Belle, she'll give you no peace till she's satisfied. <laughs> and as for you, Job Fairfax, I don't know who tied your tie, but he looks like a turkey with his neck stretched. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you won't join in, you just keep out of the way. Uh, uh, are we all ready? Yes. All we need now is Bess. And Jill? Here you are, my dear. Here's your pretty frock. Frock? Well, my dear, you didn't think we'd let you be unsuitably dressed? Not as bridesmaid. <laughs> Not on Eve, a lady, do <laughs> <laughs> And this is for your pretty hair. <laughs> and this is for your pretty knee. <laughs> and orange blossom since you come before the bride <laughs> I'm sorry but someone's going to have to explain <laughs> he'll explain my dear
just uh, get him just a minute. Hello, Dr. Nelson. Sergeant Braithwaite here, sir. We've had a report what? for a poacher of a dead body found in Moy Lane Cop. Well, yes, but I'm not... No, we don't have an official police surgeon in this area, sir. Oh, yes, all right. I'll send a car for you, sir. Okay. Pick me up in five minutes. Thank you, sir. Oh, damn. It seems that by tradition I'm also a local police surgeon. Something about a poacher finding a body in the woods. Probably some old vagrant died of exposure. These things always happen in the middle of the night. Why couldn't they have found him in the morning? Darling, you won't be too long, will you? No, I won't be. You're not bothered, are you? About being left here on your own? What can happen in a sleepy old English village? Besides Jill's upstairs. That's my girl. You go back to bed and go to sleep. I'll try not to wake you when I come in.
What are you doing here? Why are you dressed like that? Nick, what's going on? Nick? Why isn't the phone working? Nick? Why did Dr. Sharp keep garlic in here? Why did Dr. Sharp keep garlic in here? Nick? Huh? Nick? Why did you keep this? Tell me, what is it? What's the matter? Please! Bruce! 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 Oh, you, my dear. Whatever you doing with this? Oh, you are a strange one and no mistake. I'm strange. Bess, please, tell me what's going on. Oh, there, there, my dear. Don't take on so. It's time, that's all. It's past midnight. That means it's Lady Day. And Nick's come to take you to the ceremony. That's what he was trying to tell you. No, I'm not going to any ceremony. Now, don't be silly, my dear. You know you must. It's only down at the village shop. No, I'm not going anywhere till my husband gets back. Husband, my dear. Which one? Oh, oh Nick. doing in my house. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! Get out! She's nervous, poor lamb. It's only to be expected. After all, she is the lady. Lob, the cordial. No! 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 Place of yours to lay hands on him. You should have stopped me. It's only because you're my wife that you're still here at all. <laughs> Don't get up, woman, get up. She's coming here soon. Got no wish for her to come here, see you sniveling. <laughs> I thought we'd come to an outpost of sanity. I've never seen anything like it. I have. A year ago. She was a blonde, too. We never found anyone. The same thing? Exactly the same. The hair? Here you are, my lady. I've been working on this dress longer than I can remember. And my mother before me. This is... This is the proudest moment in my life.
Tessa? Tessa? My lady. Charge, you resign the mystery as I am. Now you carry it through. We shall have to carry it through now. Our great danger will come to all of us. I now have clear evidence of a tradition of devil worship in the village going back centuries. I've been aware each year of a growing excitement in the village leading up to Lady Day. I now know the reason. Please don't think I'm mad. An ancient prophecy has foretold that one day, in a year when Lady Day coincides with the full moon, a bride of Satan will arrive in the village. She will be the final mark of approval from the powers of darkness. And they will know her by her appearance. She will be moon pale, moon gold. And she will limp with her left foot, as so many of my patients do, although I can never discover from them why. She will marry and mate with Satan on Lady Day. How this would be achieved, I cannot imagine. And will then accept death at his hands in return for eternal satanic power for the village. All this is arrant nonsense, I agree. This bride of Satan will simply never arrive. But what worries me is the requirement of the prophecy that in those years when Lady Day coincides with the full moon, a young fair girl must be sacrificed, whether the Bride of Satan arrives or not. If their Lady of Satan has arrived, the girl will be regarded as a bridesmaid going before her, her blood being used to revitalize the village. Jill. Lady Day coincides with the full moon this year. I fear the villagers have somehow guessed my knowledge. This morning I found a doll with a broken neck on the back doorstep. I've tried to destroy it, but it won't burn. Where? Where? Come on, come on, come on. 
machen. Where? Where? This door? Ah! Ah, she's not the one! We have betrayed the word! She's an imposter! She knows I'm Mr. Ibn. She can't be allowed to live. She must die in the old way. You come over here. No part. Cloven hoof. No. An inbred deformity.
Why did Dr. Sharp keep a crucifix? Huh? Nick? Why did he keep this? 